Stock splits abound. Shopify joining in. Shares up today. Let's talk about it with Brett Seifling joining us from Gerber Kawasaki. Brett, good to see you. So uh, Shopify, the latest to split the stock. Is it a cheap trick to get the shares up for a day or does it really make a difference? It kind of is, Oliver. You know, stock splits, they're generally a, a non-event when it comes to the stock price. Generally throughout history, you know, higher price stocks have been viewed, you know, as more favorable. But with the recent trend change between like Tesla splitting their stock and other companies like Apple and having such a positive psychological effect, um, I think that really management's just trying to, to bring attention to the name, really. So what's the idea then? It just becomes more uh, uh, tradable on a single share basis. Uh, you know, I guess um, uh, 1700 that was pretty expensive too. Uh, but uh, 391 I, I guess also the same. Yes, it obviously makes it cheaper, right? Psychologically for retail investors specifically. Um, it's it's kind of silly though, right? Because most platforms allow stock slices already where you're able to purchase fractional shares. Um, so, you know, it, the, another way to kind of look at it is maybe Amazon, since they just did their stock split as well, a lot of people kind of group these two companies together. You might own one or the other, and they didn't want maybe the stock price to be a deterrent, uh, thinking that you know Amazon's share price is technically cheaper when obviously the values of the companies are massively different. And the market already gave it a four for one stock split, <laughs> um, but I guess um, uh, we'll add on to it. The bull case for Shopify, are you guys believers there right now, Brett? Is this a buyable dip? Yes, we have owned Shopify for quite a while now. Um, it's not a huge position for us, but we do believe that it you know, earns a place in, in some of our clients' portfolios. Um, we like the e-commerce sector. Uh, this last earnings report, I was on TDA, and we kind of talked about uh, the deceleration in the revenue growth, uh, which wasn't encouraging to really see. Um, and really what's the focus here is the gross merchandise volume and really attracting people onto the Shopify platform and making it so sticky that they're refusing to leave. And so this is just a leader in the space when it comes to small business e-commerce, and they're clearly not going anywhere. What do you guys mostly ascribe this uh, big drawdown in the e-commerce space to over the last six months? Is it just the same kind of macro pressure as valuations have been coming down, or is there something specific here about some of those sales metrics for these e-commerce businesses pricing in a bit of a slower post-COVID world? Yeah, I think it's uh, overall the weakening macro backdrop, right? We had inflationary pressures, we had supply chain pressures, um, and mostly just all growth companies across the board were really hit when the Fed started raising rates and people started questioning valuations. So uh, ultimately, it's something that we're cautiously optimistic about. It's not something that we think that we're completely out of the water with yet. Dropify could definitely go lower from these levels, but it's much more attractive after, you know, it's obviously down nearly 80% from its highs. Think this thing can ever get back? Well, I guess it won't get to 1700 if they're going to do a 10 for one split. But uh, adjusted, uh, is there a potential for this thing to get back to a high like this decade? I do think that there is the potential for that to happen. Obviously, they've got a long way to go. Um, but the way that they've been executing, uh, you know, management specifically has, has done a great job with Shopify. Um, I'm not thrilled about how they did also vote to change the shareholder class and give the founder a ton more control. Now he has 40% of the voting rights. So, you know, as a shareholder, we want to be able to voice our concerns when things are going wrong in the business. Um, and ultimately, this is just bad for their corporate governance governance overall, but it does incentivize, you know, for the founder uh, to, to stick around and, and really build the company. Okay, uh, Brent, thanks for the update here. And uh, a cheap trick, but uh, long term might still be a, a good way to generate some interest in a stock beaten down here. Uh, good to have you again. Thanks, Brett. Mr. Seifling joins us from Gerber Kawasaki, the director of Get Invested at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth Investment Management.